Hello everyone, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. My name is Ark Revner and I like to play games, and today we're going to be talking about Ganyu, and whether or not the Prototype Crescent or the Blackcliff Warbow is going to be Ganyu's best-in-slot DPS weapon for free-to-play players. So in my last video, I actually did already review the Blackcliff Warbow, it is a very good weapon, it's very strong, and anyone can get it so long as they save enough Masterless Star Glitter. However, I got a lot of comments asking which is better, the Prototype Crescent or the Blackcliff Warbow, and which one is more worth it for a free-to-play player. Now, I did have a copy of the Prototype Crescent because I crafted it, however, I did not have it leveled up enough in order to make a proper damage showcase comparing the two, so I spent the last couple days making sure that I had leveled them up to the exact same level, so that we could have a fair comparison between the two weapons. I really hope that this helps some people out because I know that a lot of people are worried that if they don't have a 5 star weapon that they're not going to be able to DPS properly or maximize their build. However, Ganyu really is one of those characters that isn't held back by free to play weapons and doesn't necessarily need a 5 star weapon in order to be a top tier DPS. So I think as long as you can get a hold of one of these two weapons, then you're going to be golden in terms of a DPS Ganyu. Alright, let's go ahead and talk about the Prototype Crescent. So I just want to let you guys know I have leveled up Ganyu to level 90 now, so she will be hitting a little bit harder than the last video. With the Prototype Crescent, she's currently sitting at 1,836 attack damage. Her Elemental Mastery is at 126, her crit rate is 32.6, her crit damage is 204.2, her energy recharge is a little bit low at 110.4, and her Cryo Bonus damage is 61.6%. Alright, and here we have the Prototype Crescent. So just letting you guys know, both the Prototype Crescent and the Blackcliff Warbow will be at level 70 out of 80, and at Refinement rank 1 in order to keep things fair. So the Prototype Crescent is actually a really great weapon. When the charge attack hits one of the weak points, the movement speed increases by 10%, as well as your attack damage is increased by 36% for 10 seconds, which is a huge, huge damage boost. And just letting you guys know, I will be using the Blizzard Strayer set. I do think that this is actually one of Ganyu's absolute best sets. However, if you do already have a Wanderer's Troop set, even though it's harder to farm, then you can go with that for a Melt Comp. My Ganyu is still currently C0, I just wanted to keep her that way so that free-to-play players who do obtain her can see just how much damage she would be doing. And my talents are all level 8, which is pretty high but doable for free-to-play players. If you do find yourself wanting to build the Prototype Crescent, go ahead and go over to the Blacksmith, either in Mondstadt or Liyue. Scroll down to the Prototype Crescent, and you should be able to craft it if you have the right materials. It gets a little bit tricky though because, unlike the Blackcliff Warbow, you are going to have to get multiple Northlander Bow prototypes, which are extremely rare. The Crystal Chunks as well as the White Iron Chunks are not that hard to farm, so that's not a problem. But that bow, I've only gotten three since starting this game, so they're really hard to come by. So if refinements are something that you are considering and thinking about, then just be ready to not be able to reach R5 straight away because it may take a few months to even a year or more. All right, now I wanna show you guys how the prototype Crescent actually works. So like I said before, you're going to have to actually hit an enemy's weak point in order to proc the extra damage boost. So by doing so, we went from 1,836 all the way up to 2,105. That is a really huge damage boost. However, it is only for 10 seconds, so you do have to act quickly if you want to make sure that you are hitting enemies for as hard as possible within the allotted amount of time. However, also keep in mind that if you cannot hit the enemy's weak point, or if the enemy doesn't even have a weak point, you will not be able to proc this and you will lose out on a lot of DPS. So if you're not very good at aiming or are on mobile, you might not want to pick this weapon. However, you can see that the damage is very nice, if you manage to connect properly. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to the Blackcliff Warbow. So, as you can see, my numbers are a little bit lower than the Prototype Crescent, just because I do not have that extra attack as a substat, so I have 1648 attack. However, it makes up for it because now I have 30% extra crit damage. So even though I may be losing out on attack, I'm still actually going to be doing a lot of DPS just because of that crit damage. 
All right, and here we have the Black Cliff Orbo. Like I said, I'm going to be keeping them both at level 70 out of 80 in order to keep things fair and refinement rank one. It is a very good weapon. I do think that the Black Cliff Orbo is a very good weapon because of that crit damage substat. It's amazing and adds a lot to your DPS. However, it is very conditional in order to stack your attack. You have to be able to defeat an enemy in order to get that extra 12% and three stacks of it. So you have to defeat three enemies. I'm keeping the Blizzard Destroyer set, like I mentioned before, as well as my constellations will be exactly the same and the talents will be exactly the same. If you do decide that you want the Black Cliff Orbo, you can find it in Paimon's Bargain Shop, and it does cost 24 Masterless Star Glitter. I actually think that this is probably the biggest drawback for this weapon is the fact that you do have to pay the in-game currency of Masterless Star Glitter, which is extremely hard to come by. And not only is Masterless Star Glitter extremely hard to come by because you can only get it through summoning in the gacha, but it also makes it so that you will have less summons in the long term on the gacha itself. Essentially, every Black Cliff Orbo that you do buy for a refinement or just its base copy will cost you about 5 summons. Now, in my opinion, 5 summons isn't very much, but 25 summons is a lot, and that could be the difference between getting a 5 star character or weapon that you're really trying to gun for. So please keep that in mind before you decide on anything. Now, we did go over this in the last video about the Black Cliff Orbo, but for those that did not see it, let's do a quick recap. So I'm starting out with 1,648 attack, but you can only actually get the procs on the Black Cliff Orbo if you defeat an enemy first. So let's see how much attack that gave me. So now we're up to 1,743 because we ended up taking out one enemy. So we should be able to raise our attack two more times. Let's try to snipe this. All right, one more hit. He got in the way and come on, here we go. There. Now we're at 1,838 damage, and we still have one more boost to go, so let's try to take out another enemy. Alright, and there we go, and now we should be at the max attack stat, so that gives us about 1,932 damage. This is still lower than the prototype present, but keep in mind that we do still have that additional 30% crit damage. So you can see that we actually end up doing a lot of damage because of it. All right, guys, and for the rest of the video, I'm actually going to put up a side-by-side -side comparison of both the Prototype Crescent and the Black Cliff Orbo. The Prototype Crescent will always be on the left-hand side of the screen, while the Black Cliff Orbo will always be on the right-hand side of the screen. I decided to do this just so that you can see their damage numbers side by side so that you can make a decision for yourself after seeing the numbers and the play styles that I have to employ in order to get the damage outputs needed to DPS with Ganyu. Stick around until the end of the video if you want to hear what my personal opinions are on these two weapons and what I personally recommend based on what you might have on your account currently. Also, if you're finding this video helpful at all, please feel free to leave me a like and comment down below. It really helps my channel grow. This video took a lot of time and resources in order to make, so I'd appreciate any help and support. Also, we're getting very close to 500 subs, which is really amazing. So if you want to support me and want more Genshin Impact content, feel free to stick around and hit that subscribe button. Alright, let's check in after the damage showcase. Touching. Success 
denied. Blaze over. All hail. Access denied.
All right, and there we have it. So, as you may have noticed, the damage numbers between these two weapons are actually extremely similar, and this means that it'll actually come down to what playstyle that you like rather than which one you need for the highest DPS, because they're both extremely situational. The prototype Crescent needs you to hit an enemy in its weak point in order to get its buff, while the Blackcliff Warbow needs you to defeat multiple enemies in order to get its buff. So just by playing the game, you're going to run into multiple situations where you cannot activate the buff or you can activate the buff, and honestly it's going to be a pretty case-by-case -case basis. For example, both of them aren't going to be able to take advantage of their buff when fighting bosses because it's only a single enemy, and some don't have weak points. However, in places like Spiral Abyss, they're going to really shine because you're going to be having multiple enemies and multiple weak points that you can exploit. If I'm going to be honest, I think that I personally struggled a little bit more using the Prototype Crescent than the Blackcliff Warbow, and that's because I ended up missing a lot of shots because I was trying to aim for weak points. Whereas with the Blackcliff Warbow, I was just worried about actually defeating them, so I was able to take advantage of hitting them on bigger points of their body and taking them out that way. However, when you do activate that buff on the Prototype Crescent, you do get a massive boost that you would normally have to defeat three enemies in order to get a similar attack on the Blackcliff Warbow. I think it also comes down to the personal resources that you have. If you do have access to the Prototype Crescent because you have one of the Northlander bows, then that's great, and maybe you can go for that. But just keep in mind that you're not going to be able to refine it very well, especially if you've already used one of the bow prototypes for, say, the compound bow for another character. And with the Blackcliff Warbow, you're going to be able to refine it if you do end up sacrificing your wishes, but you have to ask yourself, is it worth sacrificing those wishes? Up to 25 if you want to fully refine it. It will end up being a much stronger weapon than the Prototype Crescent if you do end up refining it, but you have to ask yourself if it's really worth it. This is one of those moments where I really can't tell you what's going to be the best thing, it more depends on what you want, what your playstyle is, what you can afford, and what you can't afford. But I hope that by at least seeing them side by side, it'll help you make a decision. Alright guys, that's all for now. I really hope that this helped. Um, it did take a long time to make, but I think it's worth it if it does help a few people make the right decision for themselves. If you ended up liking the video, please leave a like and comment down below. It really does help me out. And stick around, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you here and love to make more Genshin Impact content for you guys. I'm planning on making some more Ganyu videos, especially since I do have constellations for her, so stick around if you want to see those. Alright, that's all for now. Best wishes. Bye.